Welcome to Coffee and Prayer. I'm Pastor Ted Peters, and you may think it's Super Bowl Sunday, but it's really the fifth Sunday after the Epiphany. It's also Holy Communion Sunday here at Cross and Crown Lutheran Church and School. Oh, I hope you'll gather a little bread and some wine or your favorite wine substitute and later in worship we'll celebrate holy communion right now let's open in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit please join me in the prayer of the day the lord be with you everlasting god you give strength to the weak and power to the faint. Make us agents of your healing and wholeness that your good news may be made known to the ends of your creation through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let me say something about the painting behind me. The name of it is Cosmo. Genesis and the artist is Blanche Marie Gallagher. It's the theology of creation as we find it in a Jesuit theologian named Teilhard de Chardin, Pierre, French, Teilhard de Chardin. And some of you just might know who he was. Cosmo Genesis. God is continuing to create this marvelous universe that you and I live in. Our first reading is Isaiah 40, 21 to 31. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them out like a tent to live in who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows upon them and they wither and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me and who is my equal, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these, he who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? 
The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youth will faint and be weary and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Word of God, word of life. Our epistle is 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 16 through 23. If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting, for an obligation is laid on me, and woe betide me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. But if not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this, that in my proclamation, I may make the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so that I might win more of them. To the Jews, I became as a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law, I became as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, though I am not free from God's law, but I am under Christ's law, so that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, so that I might be, so that I might by any means save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in its blessings. Word of God, word of life. Gospel for this, the fifth Sunday of Epiphany, is found in the first chapter of the Gospel according to St. Mark, verses 29 to 39. As soon as Jesus and the disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon Peter's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came back and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door, and he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. And he answered, Let us go on to the neighboring town, so that I may proclaim the message there as well, for that is what I came out to do. 
And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. Word of God, word of life. Yes, you may sip your coffee during the sermon. Did you notice how in our gospel reading that the demons already know Jesus? Even before Jesus talks, <laughs> the demons are crying out against Jesus, against the Holy One of Israel. The demons know that Jesus is holy, and they don't like it. Well, in our own period of time here in Northern California, I don't see an individual person possessed by a demon very often. It's extremely rare. We're not likely to bump into that on an everyday basis. Individual demon possession, rare. But what I do see a lot of is demonic spirits inspiring groups. An evil spirit can get a hold of a group and bad things happen. Is that true of football? Well, what about the spirit of wanting the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to beat the Kansas City Chiefs or the other way around. So if you and I don our 49ers jersey and make a big bowl of popcorn and sit in front of the TV with our favorite beverage, we're in the spirit. Is that demonic? No. No, it's not. Probably a good, a good, healthy spiritual experience. Uh, unless, of course, you're a Raiders fan. I do think that we have a lot to fear, though, about an evil group spirit. Let me remind you of Leona's Law of Evil. Well, maybe you never heard it before, so... Here it is, the first time, Leona's Law of Evil. You know it's the voice of Satan when you hear the call to shed innocent blood. Let me repeat that. You know it's the voice of Satan when you hear the call to shed innocent blood. Yes, Satan was there on Good Friday, many years ago, in the city of Jerusalem, inspiring the crowd to cry out, crucify him, crucify him. Satan loves it when we share the spirit of shedding innocent blood. Of course, shedding innocent blood can either be literal or figurative. Oh, uh, they're both <laughs> demonic. <laughs> well, 20 years ago, if you may recall, our nation's leaders conspired to scapegoat the nation of Iraq in order to justify a military invasion. And after a couple of years, 150,000 Iraqi people had died a violent death. 4,000 of our brave men and women in uniform were brought home in caskets. How happy was Satan on that day? That 
is the call to shed innocent blood in its literal form. What about its figurative form? Well, you probably know it in the form of gossip, right? Oh my goodness, it's so much fun to say scandalous things about somebody that's absent and all of us in the group, oh my gosh. Do we enjoy a conversation at the expense of hanging somebody absent in effigy? That's figuratively shedding innocent blood. In our political rhetoric, and you probably know it well, to get the whole nation to believe that a certain political leader is scandalously tarnished because of something we say. We're talking about the Ten Commandments, or will be uh, during Lent in Kids Club. And when I'm watching the television news and looking at the Eighth Commandment, thou shalt not bear false witness against your neighbor. Oh, my goodness. We have the figurative shedding of innocent blood on an almost daily basis. That's the demonic possession of the group. As I said, I don't see very many individuals getting possessed, but groups can bear an evil spirit and people get hurt. Maybe they don't shed their blood, but they can get hurt by what gets said. Now, Here's the bad news. Jesus is able to exorcise demons and in individuals, but as far as I know, Jesus has no exorcism for the group, for the nation, for the society, for the clique that we're a part of. Nope, no exorcism for that. What will help? I don't know. How about repentance? Please join me in the prayers of intercession. The Lord be with you. For the church, for ministries of healing and wholeness, for hospital, for hospice and military chaplains, for those serving in prison ministry, for all who proclaim freedom and release in the name of Christ. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. For this congregation, for outreach and social ministries centered here, especially Noah, for parish nurses and visitors, for ministries of companionship and support, for the World Prayer Circle, for the school, for the young people in this place who, who open all of us to new understandings, hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. In thanksgiving for the faithful departed who were called by name and now rest from their labors, 
that their lives serve as witnesses to the goodness of God, let us pray. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Come quickly with your healing power to all who seek love, who seek support, who seek restoration. Dispel fears and shadows. Restore broken relationships and mend broken hearts. Bring relief to those who are sick or struggling. Wrap in your heavenly arms your children who are connected with our congregation. We think especially now about Triche, Jan and Terry, Alexandrian family, Linda, Scott, Linda, Richard, Dutch, and Charles, that's Jackie's son in Africa. We lift up also Joanne and Carol, Gabe, Chris, Mark, Chris, Carol, Sawyer, and those who are homebound, Dick and Dorothy, Ruth, Pastor Leon, Beverly, Ginny, Norma. God of mercy, come quickly to us with grace upon grace as we lift these and all other prayers up to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, hopefully by this time you've got your bread and your wine or your wine substitute. And I will bless the elements with the words of institution. Then we will pray the Lord's Prayer together. And then we'll eat the bread and drink the wine. Are you ready? Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. So at this point now, please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Please take your bread. The body of Christ broken for you. Take your cup, the blood of Christ shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his holy and precious blood strengthen and preserve you unto Life everlasting. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with us now and always. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Bye. Bye.